Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for joining in. I know this is kind of the evening. Everyone's tired and so on. Uh, and, and honestly, uh, we have 20 more people than I thought there would be originally in this room. So <laughs> thank you so much for... Uh, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> uh, well, um, thank you so much for, uh, again, for joining in. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, data-driven workflows, right? Um, essentially building, uh, building uh, data engineering workflows from getting data from one source onto, the, um, on, onto a destination, right? Now, within the, uh, within the industries, there are, uh, the, the, the industry is kind of heavy on using Spark and Scala-related tools. And uh, um, what, I'm, what I'm here to sort of um, help you all understand is, uh, um, is this new kid on the block, which is called Dask, and how you can use it to not just expedite um, your workflows, but also build cleaner workflow, uh, workflows, which can easily be shared across. Um, now, enough about the topic. Let me just talk about myself for a bit. My name is Vaibhav Srivastav. Vaib, uh, Vaibhav is a difficult name. Just, you can just call me VB. Uh, that's visual basic. Um, I'm a data scientist. I work uh, at Deloitte Consulting back in India. And I architect machine learning workflows for Fortune Technology 10 um, clients on Google Cloud. Uh, and that's where majority brunt of my experience uh, working on um, you know, big data workflows and uh, PySpark, Dask, uh, and, uh, and, and all, of these, um, all of those things sort of come through. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at reach underscore VB. I also um, put all of my talks at web of blog. Feel free to look at it later on. Um, now, before we get into the uh, contents, uh, who here has ever built a big data workflow before? All right, we've got three people. Uh, who've uh, ever heard about or worked with Apache Spark? All right, cool. Uh, who's ever heard about Dusk? All right, we've got one person. <laughs> um, all right, so, so hopefully by the end of this talk, I, I would want at least a few more hands to go up when I say who's, who's heard about Dusk. Um, cool. So, what is Spark? For, for all those who, who do not know what Spark is, Spark is a distributed data processing engine. Essentially, you write some code to be able to process massive chunks of data, uh, sorry, distribute massive chunks of data into smaller chunks of data, process them, and then, um, and then put them from one source into the destination. This, can, uh, this, is, this is used pretty much uh, everywhere. So wherever you look at big data, um, uh, dashboards, you look at uh, KPI monitoring uh, either within your firm or outside, wherever you see um, um, any place where uh, data is being aggregated or data is being migrated from one place to another, this is where typically Spark would be used. Uh, Spark has multiple abstractions. So you have Spark SQL, you have Spark Streaming, you have a machine learning library within Spark. It's, it's, it's called MLlib. There's a GraphX library, which means that you can build graph nodes uh, on it as well. It, it's got a fairly robust support as well. You can build it in Java, you can build it in Scala, Python, and R. But I'm going to talk about um, this from more of a PySpark view. Um, and, 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 and again, PySpark is fantastic. I, I love PySpark. We've, we've had some fantastic talks today about PySpark and, and how you can build stuff on it. Um, uh, but as a, as a Python developer, uh, or, or, or as, as someone who codes in Python, there are, uh, there are a lot of issues just with, uh, just with using PySpark. The reason for that is, and, and you may see on your screens as well, that uh, Spark was originally written in uh, Java, right? using, using Scala as a, as a layer as well. And uh, everything that you, that you code up within that, or anything that executes on that, is eventually run on a Java virtual machine. Right? Um, whereas, when you use PySpark, you add another layer of abstraction on top of, um, on top of Spark, which means that you first write your code in Python, which is then broken down into, or compiled into um, Java code, and then is executed in the JVM. This, this not just adds a lot of overhead, but also makes it very difficult for, uh, for people who are new to building uh, big data workflows or you know, uh, trying to sort of get their head around um, Spark uh, or, or, or just using PySpark very, very difficult. Um, some of the reasons for that, um, sorry, some of the reasons for that is, is um, uh, primarily centered around uh, the fact that your Python code is transcompiled into Java. And um, even if, let's assume that, that that's all right, 
um, every time you run a PySpark job, you get into mind-wrecking uh, trace packs. Something that, that looks like this. You literally have Java trace packs in your Python code, and you're just like, what's happening? <laughs> and uh, not just that, you, you, you get null point exceptions in Python. I mean, if, if that's not weird, I don't know what is. Um, and, uh, and, and, and this just be becomes like a very baffling experience to build quick workflows and something that just works. Um, that's where Dusk comes in. Uh, Dusk is designed to parallelize the Python ecosystem. Um, it, 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 is a, it has familiar APIs for, for Python users, and, and for, for all those of you who've never coded in Python before, Python's kind of the world's most easiest language to pick up, right? I mean, a Hello World program in, in, in Python is literally print Hello World, right? I mean, how, how, how easy can it be? Um, uh, not just that, for, for those who've been working within the Python ecosystem, uh, Dask as a library was co-developed by uh, contributors from Pandas, from Scikit-Learn, from Jupyter teams. So this is the best of the best um, you know, teams kind of working together to build um, a package or build a library uh, to give you a way to build distributed workflows. And again, it, this, this is something which scales from, uh, from multi-core, which meaning like just one computer, to thousands, and, uh, thousands of nodes of clusters. Um, now let's take a deeper look into this. Um, I mean, I've been trying to uh, convince you guys about Dask, so let me give you some, some data points as to why Dask um, uh, is, is the right fit for your next big data workflow. Um, Dask is, is basically a scalable Pandas data frame. So if you were to read, um, read a file from, say, an Amazon S3 bucket, um, which is present in S3, say, bucket dummy data in 2019, all you have to do is just import uh, Dask data frames, which is the library, and you do dd.read parkway, because that's the file which is present in that uh, bucket. And if you have to group by and, and perform any computations on it, you can literally just do df.group by um, on the name, uh, take the value, uh, compute its mean, and, and give you a data frame too. In just three lines of code, you basically read through an Amazon S3 bucket. You, uh, you, you, you grouped by that particular data uh, on the name. You computed, its, uh, you computed how many times was it there. You computed the mean of it. And then you returned that data frame as well. That's just three lines of code. If you were to do, that, do the same thing in, in, in PySpark, it, it would be massive amounts of code. And, 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 and before you reach a stage where, where you can even build those flows, uh, you would have multiple exceptions. You would have null point exceptions. You would have Java trace packs, which more often than not you would not understand. Um, then second, this is this is something if you're a, if you're a data scientist or if you're uh, if you're a machine learning engineer, this is something which is very important. Uh, you can actually parallelize um, your your Scikit-Learn, which is a machine learning library, um, but workflows or you know uh, Scikit-Learn flows using Dask. So uh, you can essentially uh, export or, 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 or take in joblib, which is like a parallel backend within scikit-learn, and, um, and, and you can use Dask as a task scheduler, which means that it, for every job that you run via Dask, it creates a task graph, which means that where your data is and where all it can go, it, it, it creates that, and you can uh, parallelize all of your um, ML flows, your data flows, and so on and so forth with uh, Dask. And, now comes the most interesting bit. We were, we were just talking about creating big data workflows, but Dask does so much more than that. Let's take, for example, this existing code base. I'm running two for loops in there, and I'm, I'm, I'm essentially just uh, appending. So, so for, for x and x, and then again for y and y, I'm essentially checking if x is less than y. And if it, if it is, then I uh, put it into a function f, which can give me a result. If not, then I put it into another function, which gives me a, gives me a result. And then I push it all into a, um, into a results list. Now, if you just look at this code, this is a sequential code, right? But it doesn't have to be sequential. Um, and and if, if it was to run sequentially, it would essentially take one x out of the big x list, and then it would find one y from the big y list, and then keep on computing this again, uh, again and again, till the time both the lists do not exhaust. But we can actually use Dask to be able to parallelize all of these processes, because these processes are not, dist are not dependent on each other. So each and every um, small x or each and every unit within the big x list is independent of each and every unit within the big y list. And how we can do that is literally by adding two lines. 
which is I, I define the function f as a dask.delayed object. What that does is um, it, it basically creates a lazy graph of your function, and it, it only calls it when it is, um, it only calls those functions or it only passes the data into those functions when I do uh, dask.compute results. Right? So essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm explicitly telling my, um, or, or I'm explicitly telling my uh, compiler or my, or my interpreter that all you have to do is uh, once I hit compute, you have to take these delayed objects and uh, parallelize this across all the cores that I have within my, uh, within my machine and then uh, send these data in, in parallel chunks. And this is and, and, and this is massively fast, right? And again, you you can you can pretty much use this on any of your existing Python code bases, um, and that's the best part. It's it's literally just three lines of code. Um, all right. Next, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, now, Dask not just creates um, you know it, it's not just something that runs on like a cluster. Right, it, it 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 fairly easily scales up. You can scale it up to 1,000 node uh, node clusters. You can use it on supercomputers. It, you can, it works at uh, gigabyte uh, bandwidth. It has a it has just a 200 millisecond task overload, which means that whatever I write within task gets gets computed within less than um, or, or or hits the computation graph with within 200 milliseconds. Um, and not just that, it also scales down. Which means that you can you can easily run it on a single Python thread, uh, thread pool as well, which which means a single core machine. Um, there is no performance penalty, which means that um, you know contrary to how PySpark works, uh, if you have a lot of code written in in, in PySpark, you would have to um, sort of transcompile it into um, into Java and then you know uh, work your way through. You don't have to do any of this. This is natively written in Python, hence the massive speed boost. And again, it, it, it is lightweight. You, you can literally install Dask with one command, which is pip install Dask. That's it, and it would it would work right off the uh, out of off the bat. You don't need to set up like a Java virtual machine. You don't need to set a Java path um, or any of those um, things. And of course, I I love Java. <laughs> um, and 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 the fantastic stuff. There, there, you have clean Python traceback every time your your code breaks. As 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 someone who who creates multiple workflows, this is something which is very important for me. I need to know where my code is breaking. If it if it if it breaks as at a particular function, I want to know where that function is in my in my file, not some random Java library which is hidden in 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 like some random folder and so on and so forth. I want to know where where my issue is breaking and and how I can fix that. Uh, uh, apologies for the GIF. <laughs> um, not just that, Dask actually provides you. Uh, this gets better. This it, it 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 provides you with beautiful diagnostic dashboards. Uh, so right now, uh, this is a, a grab of uh, me running a dot compute on um, um, on a on a um, four core machine. And as soon as I hit um, dot compute, it essentially first figure out where all the data can go across my um, across my cluster, and then uh, the 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 green um, sort of lines that you see that's basically I/O between multiple cores trying to compute it through. You can see um, this is from the same same um, same flow. You can see that it also gives you how your memory is doing, how your CPU is doing across um, uh, across the core. What's your network I/O, um, and you know how your Entire flow is kind of progressing. So there was a group by happening. There was also some um, some some time series analysis happening through it. So it it essentially tracks your entire flow and tells you how how fast your uh, flow is running. Uh, and and this is this is it running in the wild. Um, as you can see, essentially all we're doing over here is uh, reading some data out of an AWS uh, bucket and then. Uh, running some sort of simple computations on it. This runs side by side. So when you're running your Python code on the side, you'll have this dashboard to keep a track of where your memory is leaking, where your um, maximum time is spent uh, within the flow, how you can further optimize it, and and and, and so on and so forth. Um, cool. Now enough enough hyping Dask. Let's talk about some benchmarks. Let's talk about um, let's put PySpark and Dask head to head and see. Um, you know what works best. 
Um, I have the code for all of this, these benchmarks put up in my GitHub. I, I, I'll share the link with you all. Um, essentially, all the data for, for, for this test was put into an S3 bucket. And we had similar code written for PySpark and for, for, for Dusk. So what we did here was uh, a very simple uh, check. We just read 1,000 records from an S3 bucket and uh, just see how much time does it take. Uh, PySpark takes 11 seconds and Dask takes one second. Uh, but that's just 1,000 records. Let's scale this up. Let's push it up a notch. Let's talk about 1 million records. Um, PySpark did 2.3 minutes, took 2.3 minutes to read, so PySpark's catching up. Uh, Dask took 1.8 minutes, right? Now, um, let's, let's take it up another notch. On the same 1 million records, let's put a filter and persist that uh, output for another operation or, or, or can be anything. Um, when we do that, we see that, uh, again, PySpark's still trying to catch up. PySpark's at 2.6 minutes, and Dask is at 1.6 minutes. Um, now, this is where things get interesting. When we try to join two data frames, essentially two data sources together, um, within, within PySpark and, and within Dusk, let's see how they perform. Um, this is where Dusk kind of goes down the drain. Um, PySpark did the same thing in 5.6 minutes. Dusk did the same thing in 12.8 in, in minutes. Um, a quick thing here, the reason why, um, why this is slow is because Dusk works really, really well on, um, on um, on single data sources, so you can so if you just have like one sort of um, uh, one structure of your data either in 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 in, in Parquet or in uh, CSVs or in like a table somewhere, it would do phenomenally fast stuff. But as soon as you try try and like join the two, then the task becomes not so easily parallelizable, right? That's um, that's why it 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 becomes difficult for Dask to catch up to PySpark. So if your use case has, has a lot of joining happening between multiple sources, you may want to look into PySpark, or you may want to do that join somewhere else outside your Dask code to uh, make sure you have the most optimized workflow. Now, um, which one should, should I use? Uh, this is a famous quote by Thomas Sewell. I, I, I love it. He says that there are no solutions, there are only trade-offs. So, um, but again, just to just to put things in 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 perspective, if you if, if you're trying to set up like a new flow, if you're trying to set up like a new project, I would recommend giving Dask a shot. Um, definitely try it out because it's it's literally like one simple command, which is pip install Dask. You can you can easily take it out for a spin, run some flows on it, and and see how how it sort of performs with your existing flows. If you're in like a legacy system, say you have uh, like a Hadoop system, you have uh, you know these uh, these Java-based uh, systems, then I would recommend still sticking around with with Spark. Uh, I, I wouldn't ask you to shift everything from there um, on on um, onto Dask, um, but I would still recommend you to see if you can do some local installation somewhere on a virtual machine there, and uh, then try to um, see how how it kind of performs. Um, uh, but by all means, do do try out Dusk. It's it's something which which has very less dependencies. It can do a lot more things than just building your uh, data workflows. It can uh, parallelize code bases. It gives you nice dashboards to see how your flows are working. Um, all of these things are are, are something which Py, uh, which PySpark or Spark kind of fails to provide you from the get go. So uh, it gives you more tools in that sense. Um, there's something more. Uh, if you want to try it without setting it up as well, I've put these two Colab notebooks up on uh, up on uh, Google Colab. So you can you can try PySpark on a Google Colab. You can also try Dask on a Google Colab. Um, let me just see if I can open. So I actually did a bit of a hack here. Um, uh, Colab does not exp uh, allows you to expose external URLs onto uh, like within within the VM that it allocates you. For those of you who do not know Colab, let me take a step back. Colab is is basically a Jupyter notebook where you can execute Python code. It's a it's an open source offering from Google themselves. And uh, let's see if we can uh, connect and run this. So all you have to do is uh, just sign in from any Gmail account. You can see that it's, it's given me a Python 3 Google Compute uh, engine backend, which has 12.72 uh, gigabytes of RAM and uh, good enough um, 
good enough hard disk space as well. So let me see if I can run this. Let's execute this code. It says that um, there are a bunch of warnings. We can get to it later on. <laughs> um, it says that my, that my scheduler is set up. I have one worker and I have two cores. And I have 13.66 uh, gigabytes of uh, memory. Now, um, I really want you all to see the, see the dashboard that I've been you know, raving about for, for so long. You cannot get it by, by default. So what I do is uh, I essentially down, download ng-rock onto the Colab itself. And uh, then using, using Python, I expose a URL from ng-rock there. This is, this is extremely hacky stuff. Do not do this. <laughs> but this is just for you all to, uh, to, to try it out. I actually found this hack to be very nifty, uh, and it's not working. Ha! Huh. Um, let me get back to you um, on 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 this in a in a jiffy. But um, when you when you see it next, this would this would all be working. I think there's some issue with the version of Python that I'm running within this. But uh, as soon as you do this, it'll give you like a URL which you can ping, and it'll work. Um, I have a similar flow for uh, for PySpark as well, and uh, you can, you can essentially just go on these two and, and, and try benchmark uh, stuff on your own. Um, last, if you're more interested about learning what, um, what Dask is, how it works, the official documentation is, is amazing. You can go on, uh, go on examples.dask.org. You can also go on the GitHub repository within Dask. It's called Dask-Tutorial. Um, it's built by Matthew Rocklin and Tom um, Aspergers, who are uh, some of the people I, I really, really look up to within the Python community. And there's this amazing DAS tutorial from SciPy uh, US last to last year, uh, which is up on YouTube. You can look, uh, look these up as well. Um, before, I, before I end, special mention to Matthew Rocklin and, and Tom. They, they're the thinking brains behind the DAS project. And uh, also Ian, um, Ian Whitestone, because some of the benchmarks which I used here were his work and uh, my renditions. So thank you so much for your time. I can take any questions if you all have. Sure. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, um, so your question is that. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so the so the question is that with uh, like the way Spark works is you have like a master node which kind of schedules everything to um, to the. Um, slave nodes, and then it d distributes the work, and so on and so forth. Uh, Dask has kind of the similar uh, kind of structure. It it has a task scheduler, uh, which schedules everything across nodes and sends the data through it. But you don't need a dedicated virtual machine for it. E even if you were running it on the laptop that I'm I'm running on, it'll work uh, clearly on it. Whereas in in case of a Spark, you would have to dedicate at least a core towards it, which 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 is not the case with Dask. So, so Dask yeah. Anybody from the cluster can be the master. Yeah. And 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 so um, so if we if we take a step back, what's what's happening there is is as soon as you um, create you you remember those dask dot delayed objects, right? Um, the the function as soon as you you create those, right? It creates a task graph, yeah. which is like from source. How does thing uh, how do things go to to the end? You can think of it as as MapReduce itself. But not exactly that, um, and 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 those task graphs are then spread across multiple cores to be executed. Does does, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Cheers. Um, so I will take any other questions. So. Is there any existing integration to, for example, leverage uh, serverless uh, nodes, uh, like for example, use AWS Lambda, or kind of how to make the Right, fantastic question. I love the question. Uh, we're in, uh, in fact, recently at a um, at, at at a client, what 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 we did was have automations for Dask because Dask is nothing but a Python code, right? So you, you can easily schedule it up on a cron. You can easily schedule it up on 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 say a virtual machine. Or let's talk about uh, serverless. You can actually so we've tried it on on Google Cloud. You can have it on Google Cloud Functions. You can have it on Google Cloud Run. You can have it on uh, Google Cloud AI Jobs. Uh, as well, and uh, it would it would work just fine, because because all it's doing is just calling a library, and wherever you read your data from, you can have your data in like a SQL Server, or you can have your data in like a S3 bucket, or 
a GCS bucket on Google Cloud and, and, and run that. Does that answer your question? OK, cool. Yeah, we can talk later on. All right, thank, thank you so much. You, you were a lovely audience. Thank you so much for your time.